A shoot interview is an interview that is conducted out of character with a wrestler, promoter, manager or other insider generally being interviewed about their career and asked to give their opinion on wrestlers, promotions or specific events in their past. Back in the day, there was a huge market for wrestling shoot interviews. I remember the second that any wrestler would leave the WWE, everyone would be waiting in anticipation for their shoot interview to come out to see them absolutely rip into the company and anyone else. Shoot interviews nowadays are definitely not the same, there's not much as a demand as there was back in the day, and back in the day, shoot interviews were just blood sport. People just burying wrestlers and promotions and people involved in wrestling, and there were so many heated moments and heated interviews, and today, we're going to be discussing some of those. We're going to be talking some of the most heated wrestling shoot interviews. Before we get into it though, make sure to like and subscribe, I'll give you until the count of three to do so and let's get into it Awesome Kong's You Shoot interview is one of my favourite shoot interviews of all time, purely for the fact that she really holds no punches back. It's funny because she's so respectable and so loving towards the people that she likes, but anyone that she doesn't like, she keeps it no secret and just absolutely goes in on everyone. The most infamous segments from this interview are the hoe bag and the what a dick segments, where she just kind of reveals every wrestler that she doesn't like. Bully. He can be a dick. Brian Knobs. Ah, what a dick. Got a picture I'm going to show you later. Madison Ring. Whole bag. Really? Right in, huh? Who's right in. Whole bag. You didn't even hesitate a second, I just want to tell you. Ah. Rebby Sky. Whole bag. Who's Lacey Von Ever. Whole bag. Bitch. Rock a oh, uh, oh, funky. Funky bitch. And you owe my aunt some money. Pay my aunt her money for watching your damn kid, okay? Do that. I'm guessing that Rocket Con goes in the whole she bag. To, yeah, she's going to big old whole bag all by herself. Dixie Carter. You know. So she goes in the bag. She going in the bag. Tracy Brooks. Whole bag. Jack. She also discusses the time she beat up Bubba the Love Sponge in TNA. If you don't know the story, Bubba the Love Sponge while in TNA had some not so nice things to say after the earthquakes in Haiti, calling them a cleansing. Awesome Kong, who was helping with relief for the people of Haiti, didn't take too kindly to this and infamously beat up Bubba backstage. Based Kong. She describes how the events went down here. And now later on in the locker room, he's not with Hogan. He's not with Hogan. And you have a clear shot. Now, when you approach him, does he immediately know he's going to be hit? Or is he going to be, hey, what's up? Is well, he... anybody running at you with their fists in the air and yelling mm. and screaming like a maniac, if they don't know they're going to get hit, then they deserve to get hit anyway. What are you saying as you're running? <laughs> just screaming like an effing maniac. Just, wow. Ah. What does he do? Does he jump behind something? Uh, okay, here I am. Well, you're coming at me? Well, he deflected the, you know, like I said, you know when you're about to get hit. So he deflected the first punch. Which was a right or a left? It was a right. Okay, so um, I'm, he deflected I deflected it, it like that. Okay. Right. And then I come in. I right. come in right here. Right. And then he cowers down. Like Cower this. down like a Cowering bitch. Cowering down like, like a, a bitch. bitch. Like a bitch. Like a bitch! Like a bitch! Okay, oh, all the way down. Then I start playing knick-knack, patty back. So he went down into the feet. There isn't really any specific Jim Cornette interview that I would recommend for you to go and check out because literally any of Jim Cornette's interviews are good shouts. He has an opinion on every aspect of wrestling and any aspect of wrestling that you want to know his opinion on is just so accessible. It's out there on a DVD or on an interview somewhere. You can find his opinion on anything in wrestling. But some of Cornette's most infamous shoots are when he is ranting about hardcore wrestling. Jim Cornette is notorious for hating hardcore and deathmatch wrestling. Essentially, he believes that it isn't real wrestling and doesn't belong in the business. Jim Cornette has gone off multiple times on the various outlaw mod show wrestlers and promotions and he does it many times nowadays it's something you probably know him for but he was doing that as far back as 20 years ago this interview was from 2003 Jim Cornette has been a firm hater of hardcore wrestling for 20 years you kind of got to respect that dedication we're hardcore we're fucking yeah we're better than everybody else we're made 
they're cutting themselves with broken glass, they're snapping mouse traps on each other, they're staple gunning their tongues to the fucking turnbuckles. So this paper does this story. Fans bring the weapons. They're hitting each other with VCRs. They're really hitting each other. Guess what, folks? Doesn't take any talent to do that. I can hit a motherfucker as hard in the head with a baseball bat as almost anybody else. That don't mean I'm Ric Flair. They do a story. In front of 75 people in a warehouse, these fucking guys are mutilating themselves, and Ian Rotten and his fucking shyster business partner are making any money there is to be made off of it because they ain't paying the guys none. We're doing business with one of the biggest radio stations in town. We're doing business with goddamn sponsors, businesses, legitimate people. I don't want them to pick up Leo. They don't know too much about wrestling. They sit and they go, fuck, Junior, you ain't going to see that shit. Combat Zone Wrestling, whoever the fuck they are, I think they're the same kind of thing as Ian, only maybe with a little bit bigger budget, and fuck them too. <clears throat> While I'm talking about it, fuck you, Combat Zone Wrestling. You know, never been anybody, never going to be anybody. I've sold more tickets in my sleep than you will in your lives, and I ain't even nobody. You might have heard him in this interview discuss Ian Rotten as well, which brings us very nicely into our last entry on the list. This interview was recommended to me by multiple people after I posted my video about Ian Rotten. Turns out there's a lot more to him that I didn't know about, and I just have to thank everyone who did recommend me this interview, because this interview is two hours of Ian Rotten being absolutely laid into and ripped apart by people that he's wronged. It's one of the most satisfying listens ever. We start off with the interviewer, who by the way, does not hold anything back whatsoever, just grilling Ian on his promoter troubles, such as not paying wrestlers, owing people money, and all his other escapades and filthiness are brought in in this opening statement in the interview, such as his alleged abuse of Mickey Knuckles. The host also reveals some off-the-record information about how Ian Rotten will be main-eventing a Juggalo Championship wrestling show, which Ian gets really heated over him revealing because it was off-the-record and he asked him not to do it. Thanks for having me. Ian, we need to talk a little bit about a few things here. Your reputation in the business is not... Um, what one would consider a stellar reputation. Uh, you have a history of owing uh, people money um, by your own admission. Um, you owe over 10 people, um, over $3,000. Um, you have done benefit shows in the past. Um, one for one of your referees, um, Harry Palmer, who needed a headstone for his uh, young son that passed away. And... Um, the stories that came out of that show was that it was a full house, you were doing great on concessions, um, and the amount that you gave Harry Palmer was uh, in uh, $500 or less. Um, there are allegations that you um, had a physical altercation with Mickey, uh, Mickey Knuckles um, and, and did some bodily injury to her. Um, and you also said that uh, you are scheduled to be in the main event um, this weekend for um, JCW, which is uh, the Insane Clown Posse, and their Jugaloo Championship Wrestling. Um, and I have in front of me the lineup for that show that lists the main event as Corporal Robinson against Richie Boy Briar Wellington. So who are we to believe first when it comes... First of all, dude, you, you, you just broke a cardinal rule uh, uh of anything of reporting and lost all credibility with me whatsoever. I told you that well, off the record. It's a surprise thing and you and you just blew it. I just Well, I, it's I not a surprise thing, Ian, if it's on the internet and it's part of what the ICP is putting out. And um you know, it, yeah, it, there did, are no surprises when it comes to ICP and my credibility is far more uh valid than yours at this point. The host then also questions Ian over the allegations of paying J.C. Bailey in drugs, and basically gets an admission that he did. Um, let, let's talk about one of the things that is dogging you the most, okay? And that is the thing with J.C. Bailey and the funeral, and J.C. Bailey in general, alright? Now, um, J.C. Bailey, yeah, for those that do not know, is the son of Joe Bailey, um, one of the um, most well-known people down around in the Mid-South area. His son got into the business. Um, you took him under your wing. Um, and <clears throat> there was a night that J.C. worked for you 
um, five times. Uh, was it a King of the Death match um, event? Am I correct in saying that? He, he, he worked four times in two days. Okay. All right, four times in two days. And the report that I got, that he got $60 from you and a handful of pills. Now, you said earlier, and I'm going to quote you, you paid JC $110 for working those four or five times, whichever the case may be, and then JC came and bought pills from you. Is that a correct statement? Well, well actually, uh, you also have to add in the fact that he was uh, also paying uh, $75 on night one. Okay. Now, at, at the at the shows where you paid him a hundred and and whatever dollars, and you said he came and bought pills from you at, after the show, is that a fair statement? You sold JC pills at your show. Yeah. Okay. So that makes you a drug dealer. You that's you what, sold drugs to an addict. Works. We mentioned Mickey Knuckles before about the allegations of him injuring her, and Mickey Knuckles then calls in to go and grill Ian over those allegations. And yeah, she does not hold back any punches whatsoever. Hi, Ian. How are you? Nice. I'm fantastic. Do you even know who the fuck this is? Yeah, it's Mickey. Yeah, so why do you want to tell people some bullshit lies that you didn't beat the fuck out of me, and then you want to spread about five or ten rumors that I got to hear about when I go to Illinois, wow. and when I go to fucking Chicago, and they tell me all these five or six rumors. Fucking Corporal even told me a rumor that Daddy called him on. And, and you're going to tell all these fucking rumors of lies, but you're not even going to tell that fact you beat the fuck out of me? Nikki, I didn't beat you up, and you know that. Oh, shit, that's why your you wife tried to call the cops on us twice in the same fucking night. Never had an affair. Okay, Ian, you know what? Because I've been nice. I have turned down shit interview at the fucking shoot interview because I didn't want to do this to fucking public. So when Jerry told me you were having him on your show and he fucking told me what you said about me, that just pissed me off to no fucking end. I have been fucking nothing but nice and pretty. This is done. Everything now Nikki, will I come didn't out beat of you me. up. And you know that. And you know I didn't beat yeah, you up. You yeah, bent me backwards in the fucking kitchen over the countertop and tried to stick a fucking little screwdriver in my fucking eyeball. You tried to fucking kill me, Ian. IWA wrestler Bull Payne just calls in, and I'm just going to let you listen to this, because he just, oh my god, listen to this. Again, you run your mouth about shit you don't even know about. You weren't around, all you're doing is, is, is listen to, the, to someone else who ha- has a beat, because you have a beat with me. You're a waste of you, you human have, life. You, you, you have, have no knowledge. Yeah. You have no knowledge. You're a minister to the wrestling business, and if I didn't lose my job, I would beat the fuck out of you every time I see you. You are the most disgusting piece of crap that I have ever fucking laid my eyes on, and you are a cancer to the wrestling business. And finally, Joseph Bailey, the father of J.C. Bailey, calls in and again just rips Ian a new one. He says Ian and IWA Mid-South played a part in his son's death and he talks about other people Ian has wronged as well as mentioning the fact that Ian asked for gas money from him at J.C.'s funeral. Have a listen to this. Let me count the people in the time that I've been with you that I know you shit on or you screwed. Let's go back to King of Death matches uh, over in uh, Indiana when that little dumb kid by the name of Ray went and took a second mortgage for over $20,000 on his home. Remember him? I sure do. <laughs> Never got a dime back from you. Kid lost yes, his did. home. No, he didn't. He lost his home. He didn't get nothing out of you. And now that I've heard, and I've got it on a DVD or a CD that this guy's going to run off, that you sold my kid drugs, give my hand to God. I told you I was going to be the, I was going to be your nightmare. I'm going to town that you held that damn death permit in. I'm going to turn it over to the prosecutor and see if your ass could be prosecuted for selling drugs to my son. You come to my son's funeral, my ex-wife didn't want your ass there. She threw a screaming hissy, threw a fit, raised her, showed her ass. But I made it possible just for you to visit my son because I thought you cared a little bit about him. And then when you go out to the parking lot, you sit out there and you cry. I didn't know about it until two weeks later until you told me. My sister-in-law gave you gas money to leave the facility. She didn't tell you she was sorry that my, my ex or the J.C.'s mother ripped your ass. 
That's a damn lie from hell. The shit you do help kill my son. You didn't help kill him. He got the ring and done the shit himself. But the shit that you do, and you're not going to bring nobody on family entertainment. That's never going to happen. And I promise you, I am going to be on you like the white and the black on a damn leopard. I'm going to stay on your ass. Believe that. Trust that. Believe it. Say what you want to. I'm going to get you. If I would have knew you had sold my son drugs or gave my drug son at the at, at the funeral yeah, home, you wouldn't have stayed. You are a damn liar. You, you, know, you told me that I would have shot you at the damn... I would have shot your ass. I would highly recommend checking out this interview. It's two hours of Ian Rotten just being absolutely destroyed. And it's without a doubt the most satisfying thing I've ever listened to.